So many of you enjoyed the video that I did on eating hosta shoots, which this was the first year that I tried them and they were so good. Uh, if you missed that video, I will link to it. But so many of you enjoyed that one that I wanted to show you one weed just a common weed that you see growing everywhere that we do eat often and it's called purslane i'm sure that you've seen it probably uh, if not on your own property maybe even when you were walking around you know in town in urban areas it grows it's just really prolific so i'm going to show you the plant today and show you there's really just only two ways that that i generally use it most commonly is just raw in salads it's just really um good to eat that way but first before i get to the plant and all of the descriptions about it i want to share this book with you it's roadside rambles a collection of wild food recipes and this is by isla hatter uh, i've got to meet isla a few times and she's a uh, really interesting and really knowledgeable so it's just full of of different recipes she actually tells about the plant and then also has recipes so i was going to read to you what she says about purslane i already knew that um, i've had her book for several years but i already knew prior to that that purslane is one of those things that it's so common that it grows like everywhere like i was saying but it is one of the superfoods people you'll hear you know you hear people that are into nutrition talk about superfoods well so purslane is one of those superfoods it is so healthy for you so this is what Isla has to say about it. Purslane, or pusley, she says, I've never heard it called that, is an almost prostrate weed with radiating whorls of succulent reddish stems and small thickish spatulate leaves. It is a native of Persia and has been a pot herb for over 2,000 years. Brought to America at some early date, it has become a common weed in fields and gardens. Henry David Thoreau wrote, I have learned that a man may use as simple a diet as the animals and yet retain health and strength. I have made a satisfactory dinner on a dish of purslane, which gathered and boiled, yet men have come to such a pass that they starve not for want of necessities, but for want of luxuries. Purslane leaves and stems are succulent enough to be used raw in salads. Substitute stems for okra in soups and stews. Pickled purslane was a colonial delicacy. Leaves and stems contain vitamins, calcium, phosphorus, iron, and omega-3 fatty acids. They can be cooked in a wide variety of ways. Seeds are also edible, but it takes considerable work to gather enough at any one time. And then she goes on to share some different uh, recipes. She's got some salads and then purslane pancakes, which sounds especially good. Baked purslane, fried purslane, uh, purslane dumplings. That one does sound good too. And purslane and cream sauce. So she's got some, some several different ways to use it. So this is a really good book. If you, if you can find it or if you can uh, ever run across it, you should pick it up definitely. Okay. So now I'm going to show you what it looks like. So you can see this is where it's growing in my head and it actually grows throughout our garden areas. And it's kind of, it's a pretty plant for one thing. It's, it's almost like a flower. I mean, when you look at it or an or ornamental, I should say, and it does bloom. The bloom's not all that uh, spectacular, but it will eventually go to bloom. I mean, bloom and go to seed. But it's even like this, it's lovely because of those succulent leaves. And you can see the, um, stem of it is red and it's also kind of succulent and moist inside there and the whole thing is edible you can eat all the leaves um, of course and even the stem so purslane is a, a a plant that is not it is frost tender so the first hard frost that happens in the fall of the year it'll be gone it'll just kind of wilt down and be gone until next year one thing i like to do because i have it spread out throughout my yard growing in different places is that when it does get so big and we're not utilizing it i've never tried to freeze it or put it up or anything like that if you have you please leave a comment and share your knowledge with us but i will snip off pieces of it so that the plant can continue to grow and throw it to the chickens they enjoy eating it they'll eat it and i'm sure that's probably how it's also ended up in lots of different areas of my yard uh, when it goes to seed I, I know the seeds can blow around but then also feeding it to the chickens and then it gets in their compost and we use their compost throughout the yard so i'm sure that's a way for it to spread now, while I have it growing like in my flower beds and around the edges of the yards or my garden beds, I should say, also in my flower beds in both, 
um, you can see it in lots of like I said even in urban places I know that sometimes I've seen it like along sidewalks because it, it is a heat loving plant so it doesn't mind that extra heat that sidewalks absorb in the summertime but in places like that where you don't know you know I would just be very careful if you think it's been sprayed with something of course I would not um, eat that and it's so succulent and moisture filled that I'd be really afraid that it would take on I mean, I wouldn't eat, even if it wasn't, I wouldn't eat it if I thought it had been sprayed. But I think this would be a particular one that might really retain those harmful chemicals if you think it's been sprayed. But hopefully you could find, even if you live in a more populated area, um, kind of in a, a lot where nobody's used it or something, you can tell it's overgrown and not been sprayed with anything like the city or the town or the county's not taking care of it. That might be a place to look for it. But um, the leaves... Or like I said, that succulent. So they kind of have that. I'm gonna eat one of them. They have a just like a green taste to me. Not really sour. I mean, just like a like a green would taste. So not really a strong flavor at all. But they do have kind of a little bit of that because they're a succulent. Um, the same kind of stuff that okri has in it. Not as much, but kind of that slimy feeling. I know there's a, a name for it, and I just can't think of it at the moment. Malabar spinach has that same kind of uh, texture thing. So for some people, they might not like that. Now, when you cook it, you don't notice that as much, of course, as if you were just eating it raw in your salad. But now I'm going to harvest a little bit of it. I'm going to take some inside to cook for my dinner and show you how I like to cook it. So this large part of purslane's growing, as you can see, right in, right behind my melons. Look at my melons. They're doing good. Uh, growing, hopefully they'll be growing up the cattle panel before long and actually producing some melons. And then in the back here is where a lot of our peppers are. So you can see them. So Matt don't always like for me to leave this, but he, he entertains my wishes. So he, he leaves it. So I just cut, them, cut it off at the stem, and that way it allows the plant just to continue growing as I uh, harvest. I mean, as after I've harvested, it'll continue to grow through the summer. If I see any little um, brown leaves, I go ahead like that one, kind of pick them off. But I'll go through them again on the when we get inside. And as far as... You know, I would just suggest trying a little bit. First of all, you could just taste it. Now, I said I, I think it tastes like um, green, just a green. A lot of people think there's a sourness to it, so you might have that. Uh, you might think that, too. And I'm not going to get too much because I'm just making a small, small little dish for probably for me and Corey to eat for dinner. So now that I've got everything ready to go here that I'm going to fix, I've chopped, my, I washed my purslane and picked out any like brown, discolored, and kind of wilted leaves, and then I chopped up the rest. Not not really finely, just kind of a loose, I guess you would say, chop. But you could whatever your preference is, this would work either way. If you left it whole, if you chopped it even bigger pieces, or if you chopped it little small pieces. So I've got some butter I'm going to melt, and then I'm going to saute some onions and garlic first, and then I'm going to add my purslane and my tomatoes and kind of just cook them all together. This was from some onions that I had left over from uh, yesterday's meal that I chopped too many for our hot dog, so we're going to use those. Now that the onions have been kind of sauteing for, oh, about three or four minutes, I guess, I'm going to add some one clove of garlic. Let that cook just a minute. I'm going to add the purslane that I chopped up and I diced up about a half of a tomato. Of course, this would, you know, depending on how many people you have to feed, you might need to increase your amount. But you can see how simple this recipe is.
I'm, I turned down the heat and I'm going to let this cook for a few minutes. I am going to season it with some salt and pepper. You could, again, add whatever kind your favorite seasoning, whatever you prefer. You could add that. I'm just going to let it simmer for just a few minutes on low. And I'm going to fry up some cornbread to go with it while I'm waiting for it to finish cooking. So as you can see, it turned out really nice. It, it's not that it's that pretty at all, although it does look nice with some fried cornbread, but it says it's that good. Mm. Makes the perfect little dinner, since this is the middle of the day for me. But it would be good, you know, this would be good for a light supper too. Mm. If you're worried about the taste of the purslane, you really don't even notice it hardly in a dish like this with the tomatoes and the onions and the garlic. And I, I think you could pretty easily add, if you wanted to add meat to it, you could probably do that too, or any other kind of vegetables if you wanted to add some, um, some peppers, even some squash or zucchini. Mm. Very good. So purslane's really good this way, but the most that I've ever eat it, I mean, the most common way that we would eat it is just to throw it in salads, just to go out there and kind of get a piece and then break it off into the salad as you're eating salad. Um, especially if you don't have much lettuce or something and it's, you know, maybe you've eaten all in your garden or you don't have any from the store, this is a really nice green just to make a salad out of. Add some tomatoes, maybe some onions or cucumbers or whatever you prefer in your salad. It's really quick and simple that way. But it's really good sautéed like this too. Now I'm anxious to try some of the recipes like those pancakes and dumplings that were in Isla's book. Those those sound really interesting. So I need to try those. I've had her book for years, but I've never tried neither one of those. Preferring most of the time just to eat the purslane raw. But it is one of those wonderful superfoods, and it's free. You know, you can find it growing for free um, all around. Of course, being careful to not eat any that might have been sprayed with something. But I hope you enjoyed seeing one of a, my favorite, really it is, I guess, my favorite kind of wild edible because it's just so readily available and easy to get. Um, there's lots of other ones I love, but that one's just the easiest, just kind of the e easiest to harvest and the easiest to eat. Please leave a comment if you have a favorite way to eat purslane or any other information to add about it. And as always, I hope you'll drop back by often to help me celebrate Appalachia. It was good, Mama. Okay. You want to taste it? It is really good. Yeah. I'm going to cut this back up. Yeah. Can I have this other piece of fried corn? You can. I'm going to just eat that and some of that stuff for lunch. Yeah, I can't eat it all. I need to save the rest of my, save my stuff in case I'm eating that for supper, considering I didn't lay anything out. Mm. I need butter. Huh? I need butter. Butter. I'm a butterhead, Mama. I'm gonna try some of the cheese. Cheese and also. I'm gonna go back to 
that farm and be able to get peaches. Probably should have gotten this last time I was down there. Mm. I'm good. Um, later in the years, I mean in the summer, is typically better for peaches as the summer goes on. And they get cheaper. Usually, they may not this year. Usually they get cheaper because they know they've got to get rid of them. Like this time of the year, there's like high hopes of I'm going to sell all these all summer, you know, by August or whatever. They're like, we got to get rid of these. All right. Oh. So. That's good, Mom. Thank you. That's pretty good, I know. Mm-hmm.